Hi everyone, this is Professor M. Das Science, and today I want to talk about exchange degeneracy in another one of our videos on rigorous quantum mechanics. We will study a system of two identical particles. We will find that there are many, in fact infinitely many, cats that can describe a system of two identical particles. This is a feature of quantum mechanics that we call exchange degeneracy. However, we will find that when we try to make predictions about our system using the usual rules of quantum mechanics, something really, really strange will happen. I will not say more at this stage, but I think you will enjoy the video. So let's go! To understand exchange degeneracy, I will use the simplest possible example, a two-particle system. From the video on tensor product spaces, we know that the state space V of a two-particle system is the tensor product of the single particle state spaces of particles 1 and 2. Let's start with a single particle, and to make the example even simpler, we're going to limit our discussion to the spin degree of freedom of a spin one half particle, for example an electron. This degree of freedom is described by a two-dimensional state space, and remember from the videos on spin one half that the eigenstates of the SZ operator provide the basis for this state space. These eigenstates are labeled by an up arrow corresponding to eigenvalue plus h bar over 2, and by a down arrow corresponding to eigenvalue minus h bar over 2. The state space of the second particle is the same, and we form the combined state space by the tensor product here. The tensor product state space V has dimension 4. We can construct the basis for it by calculating the tensor products of the basis state of the individual state spaces, and we get these four basis states here. Remember that we typically use a much simpler notation like this, where the order of the arrows indicates to which of the single particle state spaces they refer to. Similarly, the SZ operators acting in individual state spaces are now promoted to operators acting in V like this. And for simplicity, we typically write them like this, omitting the identity operator and the tensor product sign. Now that we have defined the state space of two identical particles, we imagine a specific situation to exemplify exchange degeneracy. Let's imagine that we measure the z component of the spin of both particles, and we obtain plus h bar over 2 for one, and minus h bar over 2 for the other. We know that right after this measurement, one particle is in the up eigenstate, and the other particle is in the down eigenstate. But which particle is in which state? A first option is this state here. It corresponds to measuring particle 1 being up, and particle 2 being down, which is consistent with the outcome of the measurement up here. However, these two particles are identical, which from the video on identical particles we know it means that the labels 1 and 2 have no real physical significance. We can exchange the two particles and the physical situation will be exactly the same. This means that we can also write another mathematically valid state like this, and in this case we have that particle 1 is down and particle 2 is up. The second state is also consistent with having measured one particle up and one particle down, which is all we can really say about our system because these two particles are identical. So these two states both appear to be consistent with the outcome of our measurement. However, these two states are not the same state mathematically. In fact, they are orthogonal. So which state do we have? The one in case 1, or the one in case 2? The situation is actually even more complicated. If we take the two states up here and we make an arbitrary linear combination, that we insist is normalized, then this new state will also describe the same physical situation, one particle up, one down. To be more precise, this is a superposition state, and alpha is associated with the probability of getting one up to down, while beta is associated with the probability of getting one down to up. What this all means is that there are an infinite number of possible states given by the possible choices of alpha and beta, and all these states appear to mathematically describe the same physical situation. This is what we call exchange degeneracy, and it is a feature of any quantum mechanical system of identical particles, as the ideas discussed here for two particles easily generalize to more particles. So now we come to the critical question of this video. Of all these mathematically valid cats in our state space, which one describes our physical system? An answer that may occur to you is that all of these states are completely equivalent, and any of them can be used to describe our physical system. After all, we have already encountered a similar situation in our study of quantum mechanics. We know that multiplying a state with a global phase factor gives a mathematically different state, but an equivalent physical state. This is true because none of the predictions of quantum mechanics, for example the outcome of a measurement, depend on a global phase. Let's test if this is also what's happening here. 
If the states are truly equivalent and describe the same physics, they should not only all capture the state of the system right now, but they should also give us the same predictions about what will happen next. After the first measurement of SZ for both particles, we know that one is up and one is down, and we have decided that any of the states up here is a mathematically valid state. Now let's ask the question. If we do a second experiment, and we measure SX for both particles, what is the probability that we obtain plus h bar over 2 for both particles? To answer this question, first remember from the videos on spin 1 half particles that the SX eigenstate of a single particle corresponding to eigenvalue up can be written in terms of the SZ eigenstates as up x equals 1 over square root of 2 up z plus down z. So the tensor product state after measuring Sx to be up for both particles is up up x. Plugging in the expression here for a single particle up state in the Sz basis, we obtain the tensor product of this first term with this second term. And multiplying together these two terms of the tensor product, we obtain up up, up down, down up, and down down. I have mixed notation somewhat in these expressions, but it should be clear what I mean in each case. So what is the probability of measuring up up in the Sx state if we start with this state up here? This probability is given by the overlap between the up up Sx state and the starting state like this. We can then replace the expression for the up up Sx state in terms of the Sz basis we obtain here, and we get this long expression. The only combinations that don't give zero in the bracket are this term with this term, and this term with this term. Therefore the result is absolute value of one half alpha plus beta all squared. What is this? The prediction of the outcome of a measurement depends on the value of alpha and beta. Depending on which of the states we pick to describe the result of the first SZ measurement, we will make a different prediction for the outcome of our second SX measurement. The situation is therefore completely different to that of a global phase factor. These states here are definitely not equivalent because they don't lead to the same physics. So what does this mean? We must remove exchange degeneracy and decide from all the mathematically allowed states which one is the physically allowed one. Before we say anything else, I want to generalize exchange degeneracy to an n-particle system. Consider a ket psi belonging to the state space V of an n-particle system of identical particles, which as usual is given by the tensor product of a single particle states. Also consider the n-factorial kets P alpha psi, given by all possible permutations of the n-particles. This set of kets span a subspace of V, which we call V psi. Any state in V psi is a state that mathematically describes the same situation because the particles are identical, so this is exchange degeneracy for an n-particle system. Just like we found for a two-particle system, this gives rise to a big problem. All of these states are mathematically describing our system, but when we use them to make physical predictions using the usual rules of quantum mechanics, we get different answers depending on which states we choose. This is a problem for any physical theory, and exchange degeneracy must be removed. So the big question becomes, which of these states describes the physical system? The answer to this question is by no means trivial. In fact, exchange degeneracy forces us to introduce a new postulate to our quantum mechanical formalism to deal with systems of identical particles, the so-called symmetrization postulate. Well, I hope you're somewhat puzzled and that I have piqued your curiosity. If you cannot wait to see how to resolve the problem that exchange degeneracy poses, go check out the video on the symmetrization postulate. And as always, please subscribe.